If you are religious, you may feel baffled by atheists especially those who have turned their back on belief in God despite once being believers. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, you might want to say to them. You consider the unbeliever to have squandered something truly valuable, a relationship with God that can result in eternal life, in their haste to escape a particular corrupt or abusive sect. You might also object to atheism because you believe it offers no purpose for life. You perhaps argue that without belief in something greater, life becomes meaningless. We would all be just mortal beings whose sole objective is to pass on our genes before keeling over and dying. If these are your objections to atheism, allow me to explain to you the atheist's perspective with the help of an analogy. Imagine that your electricity company randomly selected you and seven others for an all expenses paid two week vacation in Paris. In addition to being able to eat at any restaurant for free, you get $2,000 spending money for every day that you're there. And so, pinching yourself, you fly out to Paris first class and begin enjoying your dream vacation. After a couple of days of fun and lavish spending, you begin meeting some of the other seven winners, who tell you of a rumour that has started circulating. One of the winners claims to be related to one of the directors of the electricity company, and this director has apparently told him that there is another prize that will be announced once the vacation is over. A memo is produced that seems to verify these claims, and offers more details. It seems the electricity company has decided to make one of the eight Paris trip winners its customer of the year. The prize is a luxury home in the Bahamas. The memo also indicates that preference will be given to the Paris trip winner who spends the least amount of money. On first reading, the memo seems legit, but there is no way of authenticating it. On closer inspection, it seems to contradict itself in places and there is considerable room for ambiguity as to exactly what the rules of the competition are. The memo could conceivably have been written by anyone. It could have been written as a practical joke by the winner who claimed to have discovered it, who, incidentally, is unable to prove he is related to one of the directors, in addition to being vague about how he came across the document. Despite the uncertainty, out of the eight winners, six decide to take the memo seriously and immediately stop spending money, choosing instead to mostly confine themselves to their hotel rooms for the remainder of the trip. They reason that, as appealing as the temporary thrill of a luxury vacation in Paris may be, it would be far better to be in with a chance of winning a dream home in paradise surroundings that they can live in permanently. When the wisdom of their decision is questioned, they wave their photocopy of the memo, pointing out that it seems authentic and they have no reason to doubt it. When they are reminded that nobody knows who wrote the memo, they seem unfazed. They would rather stay in their hotel rooms, missing out on a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to experience the best that Paris has to offer in the hope that by doing so, they will get something better. This is pretty much the predicament all of us are in. We are all winners because we all have the incredible opportunity to be alive for a fleeting moment in the history of the universe. By all probabilities, we shouldn't be here. If a different sperm out of the 100 million in contention had found its way to your mother's egg, you would not be here watching this video. That's without even considering the probability of your parents meeting each other and falling in love in the first place. When you factor in the same dizzying improbability for the birth of your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, going all the way back through the evolution of our species to when our predecessors were bacteria, the chances of you being here now are basically zero. But here you are. You won the lottery, and your prize is a moment in the sun. You can either make the most of that moment, perhaps by making the world a little better for those who will follow, or even simply by enjoying yourself, or you can spend it under the assumption that there is something better waiting for you 
if you will only limit yourself in ways determined for you by your fellow winners, most of whom have long since died. The Bible is the memo that has been circulated. It is strewn with contradictions and almost everything it has to say about the beginnings of our kind has been debunked by science and archaeology. Our species did not pop into existence 6,000 years ago. There was no global flood. The exodus didn't happen, or if it did, it was at a completely different time and under entirely different circumstances than the Bible describes. Like the memo in our analogy, nobody can be certain of who wrote the Bible. Ironically, scholars know more about the writers of the Old Testament than they do about the writers of the New Testament. You could write a document tomorrow that would be just as worthy of consideration as a message from God to mankind. At the very least, it would stand a better chance of being scientifically accurate. And yet, millions of people, through the urgings of their fellow competition winners, religious leaders who claim to have inside knowledge, curtail their enjoyment of the rare gift of life in hopes of something better. They deny their sexuality. They limit their opportunities to love and be loved. They submit themselves to servitude and austerity, some even going as far as to end their lives altogether, all so they can be in with a chance of winning a prize that nobody can deliver, the hope of cheating death. This is why myself and others cannot be persuaded by such reasoning as don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. The real baby, the thing most precious to those who think like we do, is life itself. The chance to make the most of our fantastically improbable time on this planet. And we would never dream of throwing it away for any reason, let alone on account of spurious, unverifiable rumours circulated in the murky past by uninformed, unknown people whose moment in the sun has long since passed. Life does have a purpose, whether you believe the claims that it can go on forever or not. Like the holiday in Paris, the purpose of life is to make the most of it and savour every moment. In terms of probabilities, you shouldn't be alive and you shouldn't be able to love, hate, cry, laugh, hurt, heal, run or stand still. Find irony in the fact that you can do all of those things. You even get to share the experience with others. Simply by being here, alive and breathing, you get to do things that will shape history. You get to create yet more fantastically improbable and beautiful moments, whether it's expanding your horizons, or raising a family, or creating something uplifting, or even simply showing kindness to someone. Every moment is a miracle, a prize you shouldn't have won. Seize the incredible opportunity the universe has given you and relish having the freedom to find your own purpose. It's your life to live and you get only one, so make it count. I'm Lloyd Evans and you've been watching my John Cedars channel. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos and thank you for watching.